Hi, so today we're going to have a look at this piece of test equipment. This is the Matrell Easy Test. Its model is MI2087AL2. This is quite an old unit. It's about 10, 11 years old, dated around 2004, 2005. I picked this one up on eBay for the small sum of £36, as it was listed as being 40 uh, for those of you who don't know, I've previously done the level 2 in, in uh, electrical installation and uh, that was the 2360, I think, that was about 15 years ago or so. And I'm currently at college part-time, I'm doing the level 2 again because I wanted to move on to level 3 and unfortunately have to do level 2 again because it's the updated 17th edition, that's the 2360. Uh, yeah, 2365, I think. So I'm doing that and then progressing on to level 3. And so I do a few odd jobs um, around for friends and family, etc. And so I thought I would like a tester, um, you know, that can do the basic tests that I need just to confirm that an installation I've done is uh, fully safe. Now, the new testers, um, these ones, they tend to be, I mean, the flukes are sort of in the region of 800 to 1,000 or so. Um, these ones by Mitrell, they're about 600, 700. So they're quite pricey items. So when I saw this one on eBay as 40, I thought, well, ideal, that'll make a good repair video. And uh, if I can get it working, a uh, good little tester. So this is the unit, as you can see, this is the front of the unit. At the side we have our connections there. Unfortunately, for some reason, they seem to have this uh, thing about using uh, proprietary uh, connectors. So you can't use standard banana plugs uh, with this meter. It, they do look very much like banana plug fittings, but they're not quite the same size, because you take that one from a uh, standard multimeter and yeah you see it's they're exactly the same circumference as the actual holes are there so I guess that's just another way of <laughs> making more money out of people by making them use the um, use the leads that they uh, provide uh, there's a blanking plate here now there's another model that's um, slightly newer than this one and that one does have RS232 connection for communicating with the computer and there's some software you can download. I've downloaded the software but as you can see we don't have the uh, part fitted on this device although the pin header is uh, behind this plate so I'm going to just get a uh, standard serial cable and uh, see if I can make up a connector and figure out what the pin outs are and uh, give that a go. Here I thought was possibly some form of uh, infrared interface uh, with the unit but no light actually passes through this at all. I'm guessing that's just a blanking plate and maybe it was an option on one of the units to have some kind of communication port there as well. And that's pretty much all there is to the unit itself. You've got the uh, battery pack. Batteries go in there. It takes uh, four C-cell batteries. That uh, gives you a total of six volts and basic specifications there. So although this tester actually predates the 17th edition wiring regulations which I believe came in 2008, it does do all the standard tests that I would uh, want of a unit for now. Obviously the latest models are going to be much more advanced, they have the ability to data log and then you can use that to print out uh, test sheets etc with your results on. But it does the basic tests, we've got our loop tests for live and neutral and line and earth. We've got trip lot test that will obviously do your uh, line and nerf uh, test but use for RCD so it won't trip out the uh, RCD. And we've also got RCD manual, RCD ramp test, um, RCD auto, insulation testing and continuity testing. The main one I wanted was the insulation testing uh, for my purpose. It comes with a carry strap as do most of these units so you can hang it around your neck etc. The unit also came with some leads. This is a uh, plug-in one. This one you use for your RCD tests and you can also use it for your loop tests. Also got 
a new set of test leads. Um, seller I bought it from said that these are not very old at all, and I've looked these ones up, and they seem to be about thirty-eight pounds for a whole set of test leads. So, in a sense, you know, I've I've paid for the test leads and got the meter free. The only thing I hate about these is that they get tangled up so so easily. It's you know, it's just ridiculous. You can't. No matter what you do with them, they end up in a big tangled mess. And again, obviously, proprietary connector, and then the various banana plug connectors there, which of course link in with our various crocodile clips, like so. They've also linked in at the back, so if you're doing a continuity test, for instance, you can just put the earth in there with your uh, neutral connector and then. Put your live like that. Also, we've got the standard probe connectors as well, which can go in. The usefulness of these is they're quite modular, so if you put in, say, your probe connector there, and then you want to attach a crocodile clip to it, you don't necessarily need to take this one off. You can just pop that in the end, like there, and then hook that onto your cable. So that's the leads that you get with the unit. And obviously this is not a review of the unit because it's an old unit and you can't buy them anymore unless you pick one up off eBay. So like I said earlier, it was purchased as being 40. Now the fault was described, um, he was saying that basically when he went to use it, went to turn it on and it didn't power on anymore. So when I got it, sure enough, I put some batteries in and it didn't actually power on at all. So I uh, took the lid off, had a little look around to see if there's anything obvious that uh, might have blown in it. Couldn't see anything obvious, put some batteries back in, put it back together again, tried turning it on again and it came on. I don't really know what the fault was with this, but it seems to be working perfectly fine so far. Although, knowing how things go when I put some batteries in it now, it probably won't work. But anyway, I thought we'd uh, take it apart because I want to take all the boards out and have a further look over them. Uh, I shan't explain them in sort of great detail, but we'll just have a general overview and just see if there's anything that I've missed as to what might have caused the problem. So to take the unit apart, we need to take off these two top parts here. These help hold in the strap. So take those two off and get rid of the strap for now. I'll also do some basic tests on it afterwards so you can see that it works. This is your battery cover. As you can see there's our battery pack there. It's quite nicely designed in that you could potentially if you wanted to change the batteries to say four double A's or something so long as you're getting six volts or maybe um, putting a rechargeable battery pack if you wish because you can just unscrew that and put in what you want. Two big fuses there, I would expect those to be HRC fuses. Uh, it actually says there fuse one is four amps and the other one's also four amps and they are time delayed fuses. And then there's a third fuse which is underneath this cover here and that one we've got down as 315 milliamps, that's rated. Those two are both 500 volts and this one is rated at uh, 250 volts. So we've got four screws to take apart. This unit's rated IP44 and it does seem to be relatively well sealed. There is a gasket going around it. Which is what you expect, even though it being an old piece of equipment, it's obviously would have probably cost in the few hundreds of pounds mark when it was first purchased originally 10 years ago. And you expect a decent build quality for the sort of test equipment that's going to be used out in the field. So we got some little washer type seals there on the screws. And then this top cover just pops off. So there's our top cover removed. And I think you can see on this one the white gasket seal that's running all the way around it, so that's quite nice. 
There's a tiny bit of damage on this, there's a little bit of plastic that's been broken off there and I did find another piece uh, down here that's been broken there and a tiny bit there, but that's to be expected of something of this age. So this is the inside of the unit as you can see. This is our, where our connectors go off to our connection port there and then obviously those going straight through to the fuses that we saw earlier on the underside. We got some big resistors here, transformer here and it's a capacitor. This is for the insulation test to develop to produce the different test voltages 250, 500 and 1000 volts. The caps all look pretty good no sign of bulging or anything which is good what are the brands of those? Uh, Jamicon for that one mm, doesn't sound brilliant and Samexon Samexon yeah so not the best uh, not the best brand of caps but hey ho they all seem to look uh, perfectly fine so to remove this We've got four screws, which then releases this from the bottom side of the unit. And that's that removed, and bottom side there connector comes through for the um, for the power though it's interesting they've used an 8 pin connector but they're only actually using two pins of it as far as I'm aware for the uh, for the power and this is the underside of the board here and that's the connector that goes in for the power as I showed you a moment ago here looks like two components, possibly resistors, that have been soldered across and uh, heat shrunk. I'm not sure if that's um, been a repair that's been made afterwards or if that's uh, genuine how it came. Also this wire here, that kind of looks to me like a bit of a bodge. So I don't quite know what's uh, happened there. And it, there is quite a lot of flux residue around. Um, some there some flux residue around that connector there some again around these pins at the back here but I'm thinking that possibly there's too much of it to to kind of say that it's probably been repaired before I suspect that it's just that you know the most part of it's either way soldered or something and some of these other parts have been hand soldered and they've just not been cleaned up very well when they were done. The connector bit on the end is, is literally just screw holding it into the board there so we can uh, take that out. And then that just pulls off like so. Unfortunately they've soldered the wires directly which is a shame. But not to worry. Now looking at the design of this, this does look like everything is pushed in to connectors, so I'm thinking that this probably would just pull out of the front. Like so. So that board pulls out big connector blocks across the back there. This board looks like it's pretty much what does all the switching etc. I think all the control is on here and this just does all the switching. So you've got four relays there and the relays are quite active when you're doing various tests including continuity etc. Like I said I won't go into great detail over the, uh, over the board because I haven't had a chance to look up yet what all these different uh, chips are. But in general, looking at the board, there's nothing obvious that's gone wrong with it at all. Nothing, no components, let's say capacitors look fine. There's no bulging on them. There's no components that are blackened or anything. So quite what was causing the issue initially with this unit, 
I have yet to discover. That capacitor doesn't look it's slightly discoloured, but it doesn't look too bad. It could be there's a dry solder joint on it somewhere, possibly. But it looks more or less okay. I um, don't think it's really worth reflowing all the joints as of yet, just to sort of see how it goes. If it causes any more problems in the future, then I have to look further into it. So this is the what I'd imagine is the control board. We've got a Toshiba processor there. That's the TMP68HC11A1T. It's a quite an old processor, but to be expected for the age of the units. Again, quite a lot of flux residue. So like I say, it's pretty certain this has definitely not been repaired. I think it's it's just how it come in the factory when they've hand soldered various things on afterwards. And it's relatively clean inside, so obviously the seals do seem to be working quite well in keeping dirt and grime out of it. Nothing much on the other side at all. You can see our rotary switch there. Various push buttons and our little piezo buzzer there. And again, this is the on switch here, it looks fine. Nothing obvious at all as to what was causing the problem. Looks fine, and then this is just our display board at the back there. So looking at all of that, say nothing obvious as to what caused the initial problem. So I think we'll pop it back together again and uh, now we've had a look inside. See if it powers back on. I'm fully expecting it to because I've been using it uh, on and off for the last couple of days and everything seems to be fine with it. So we'll pop it back together and we'll do some tests. Okay, so I've put it all back together again and I've given it a good clean. There was lots of paint splashes dotted around. Missed a little bit in the corner there, get that later. So, will it work? Of course it will. Backlight, probably can't really tell at all. Let me turn the lights off. So backlight off, backlight on. Now like I said earlier, I don't know about the calibration of this thing. It's probably out, um, how out it is. I don't know. But if we plug in our things there and we will put some crocodile clips. Now I've got here a 10 ohm resistor. This actually reads just under 10 ohms on my other multimeter, the UNI-T1. So we will do Got it between those two and 10.05 ohms. So, yeah, it reads a little bit high against my other meter, but which is more accurate, I don't know. I'd, I'd go for the other one because it's uh, slightly newer, um, obviously, than this one. But yes, yeah, so that seems to be fine. Insulation test. What I'll do here is if I zoom out a bit. Right, I'm going to use this old meter here and we'll set that for 600 volts DC and use that to measure the voltage that's coming out of here so I don't blow up the other one. So at the moment we're set at 250 volts and so we're looking at this display here I can turn that back light on. So 
there we are, so we got about 248, 260-ish, I think. So we will put that to 500. Let me see, 520. And 1000. Don't really care if I blow up this meter or not. Now we can actually hold down and that will extend the test. Now I only get an 800 and something, but that's perfectly normal. Uh, the voltage will go down depending on the resistance because it's delivering a uh, more or less a constant current rather than a constant voltage. Okay, so that's our continuity and insulation testing. You can see that those are definitely working. Right, so next we're going to do some RCD tests. Now, as I said, I don't actually have RCDs here, but I do have an old consumer unit which has got an RCD in it, so we will use that for testing purposes. Okay, so we have here a old consumer unit which has an RCD in it. I basically got it wired up to a plug and then a four-way extension lead, and then we're connected here into our test meter. I've set it for RCD auto test. 30 milliamps, this is RCD is a 30 milliamp one. Energize the power and press start. Now during this test it will trip it a few times and you obviously need to reset it each time. Okay, so that's the test complete. So we can look at half its rating, so 50 milliamps, no trip at all. That's perfectly fine, it's what we expect. Then we've got at one times current, so at 30 milliamps, we've got 23 milliseconds for the zero degrees of the waveform, and 32 milliseconds to 180, and at 5 times current, 4 milliseconds at 0 and 40 milliseconds at 180. So how accurate that is, I don't know, but it's certainly within what I'd expect it to be. And it proves that this uh, RCD unit is working. So we'll try an RCD ramp test. This will just ramp up the current until it reaches 30 and see where it trips at. And there we are, 21. If we run that test again, we expect to see very much similar or the same result. And 21 again. So that's perfectly fine. I'd expect it to be between 20 and 30, but you don't really want it to be uh, sort of less than 20 as you get near the halfway mark of the 15 milliamps. Our CD manual will obviously just do the same, but you have to do it each time. Trip lock. This will do our earth loop reading in ohms for us, so we can enable this and press start. Now I believe testing it with the using the trip lock method is not as accurate as actually bridging out the RCD and then doing it on the standard method there. And going by, I haven't actually tried bridging out the RCD, but when I've tested between this setup and then directly plugged into the wall there is quite a difference in the uh, reading there. So here we got 1.87 ohms there for that setting and obviously the reason you can't use a standard with an RCD is it will trip it out like so. And now I've got it plugged directly into an extension lead that's not going via the other one with the RCD so we can do that test again. We should get a slightly better reading this time, 1.14 ohms. Again, that's obviously going to be higher. I know if I test at the socket, it's around 46, 47 ohms. Obviously, I'm going through a bunch of extension leads here, so you're going to expect a slightly higher reading. So that concludes pretty much the video on this unit. Only thing I'd say I don't like about it is this, the coverings they've got here that go over the buttons, it's just been stuck on, it's just a sticky surface and here where the start button is, it's uh, started to lift away there I'm 
you can see it's broken a bit there so yeah might put a dab of glue or something on that just hold it in so that's a shame that they've cheaped out on that uh, hopefully the new ones are much better but I'm not in a position to uh, be forking out £600 or so for, uh, for a decent upstate version of one of these but of course if uh, Matrell you're listening and you want to send me one then it will be gratefully accepted. Anyway I hope you uh, found that video of some use and um, if you did please give it a thumbs up as always and subscribe if you haven't done so and I'll see you soon for the next video. Cheers.